Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm back with another playtime with PM Artist Studios. Now, if you don't know who they are, I would say take a screenshot here. I will try and put all the appropriate links into the description boxes at that bottom right hand corner. You'll see a gravy or you might see the words read more below the description. All links will be in there. So this will give you a rough idea of um, their philosophy, who they are, where you can find them. And then if I turn this over, it'll tell you all the social media. There is a discount code here, which I've covered up because to be honest with you, um, that you only get that discount code when you actually um, do an order. But there are other ways that you can actually get more discounts as you move along. So anyway, all of that hopefully will be in the description box. Um, I love PM Artist Studios. I love their unique style. I like their way they design. I like their ethos. I like everything about them, really, which is why I decided to make this playlist, which was Playtime with PM Artist Studio. And what I do is every time I do one of these videos, I choose either one or more of their products and I'll do a project with it and I'll play with it, um, play with those. And I thought today, so I'm just reaching over, excuse my arm if it gets in the way over there. Um, I'm going to make some postcards because I like to make arty postcards and then I sound, send them out as part of Happy Mail or I use them in my journals and like journaling cards. Now I do have some bases here which basically just need finishing there. These are what I would call my amber postcards as they're part of the way through the process but they're not finished yet they wouldn't be sent out so I've got those to play with I've also pulled in some um, blank postcards now these are just generic postcards you pick up in your stationery shop or you can actually just make your own by cutting card up let's see if I can give you some measurements mine are five and three quarter inches by four and whatever those two little notches mean. Um, if you go by centimetres, it's ten and a half centimetres by uh, 14.6 or 0.7 centimetres. So anyway, I love measurements. I don't, I don't do measurements. I'm not good with measurements. I'm using my 9 by 12 jelly plate here. I use this one to do postcards on. I actually use this one as well when I'm doing pages for my signatures for my journals. I have my 5 by 7 here only because I'm a bit heavy handed with paint. Sometimes I put the paint on here before I put it on here, but then sometimes I put it on here as well. So enough of me gabbing on. What are we actually working with today? OK, the first um, mask I'm going to use is Going Daisies. It's an 8 by 10, so obviously fits well within the size of my plate. This is what it looks like as far as the image is concerned. However, this is what it looks like in real life. Now you're gonna see this because I'm gonna be using it time and time again, but just thought I want to show you the thing in real life and compared to the size of my plate. So there you go. So that's, that's that one. And then besides that, I couldn't do one of these without using the other set I've got, which are a set of daisy masks, set of seven. Um, and these are basically flower shapes, the daisy shapes. Um, you do get seven of them. There's two that size, one that size. Actually, I think there's three. Oh, wait. There's three that size. And then they vary in size all the way up to the larger ones. So we'll be using them here and there, bits and pieces as we go along. But that's what we're using. Um, they're made of 100% um, UPO, which is 74 pound UPO, which is, where is it? 100% polypropylene synthetic material. I like it. It's, it's a little more robust than some of the plastic or the clear stencils you get out there. I like the fact that the stencils and the masks are white because I can find them. Um, other the clear ones I can't find half the time. Also, you can wash them, you can wipe them. I tend to just leave mine, to be honest with you, unless there's any really intricate pieces to it, and then I don't. So let's get on and do something, shall we? So first of all, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to make some, some white background uh, cards into some coloured card. So I just want to pull in some nice light colours. Um, you can use transparents. 
you can use whichever one you wish. I'm going to just start with these two, I think. That's a nice summery sort of colour. I will show you the paints on screen so you can see for yourself. Over here, I actually have um, a stack of labels because I tend to roll her off on them and I make labels out of them for my journaling. Sometimes I make them for gifts. And I also have some spare paper over to one side which I roll it off on if I don't put it onto my labels. And I'm using just a speedball break, it's my favorite one. I do have a larger one here which I tend to use over the back of papers. So we'll see, we'll, we'll talk as we go along anyway because that's probably at least five minutes of me gabbing on and I've not done anything. So I'm gonna put just little bits of paint on. Now I'm actually gonna do this directly onto the plate at this point because I know I'm only creating backgrounds and I'm not going to do a huge amount of paint on here. I just want little bits. Now this is a transparent paint. I think the other one is a transparent paint as well. No, it's a semi-transparent as I can see by that symbol there. Now I'm not going to promote any specific paints or any specific products other than PM Artist Studio for the simple reason that um, I use any products. I mean, luckily I'm not under contract to anyone, so it means that I can use anything I wish in any shape or manner I wish to use it. And that's that's a freedom I really enjoy. So I'm just giving this a bit of a brayer on. What I'm looking for is just to create a thin film of colour onto some of these postcards. And I'm literally going to pick them up, pop them down onto the surface just to pick up some of the colour just to create a background. I will often, oh there it shows what that one is. Um, I will very often take um, about an hour and maybe do 50 or 60 backgrounds. Um, I also have some tissue paper. This was obviously used for another jelly printing session. I like to put that over the back so when I'm actually pressing these down, don't need to press too hard, but I'm just making sure they're in contact. Um, all it means is I'm not getting paint all over my fingers. I'm just trying to keep as clean as I can, which doesn't always work. Let's put that to one side. So now all I'm going to do is just lift these off. If they haven't suctioned themselves down. You can see it just gives me an interesting, an interesting background. So we'll be building on some of these. I'm going to try and do a couple of colour combinations so that they don't all end up the same. I don't worry that my postcards curl a little. That's fine because when they dry out they'll just flatten out naturally anyway. Or I'll just put them between a couple of good books and they'll flatten themselves out that way. So there you go. That's got those four on the go. Just going to use my brayer just across here. See if I've got any lines I can pick up. I don't mind about those. So let's go to another combination of colours. Um, let's have a look. This is just a bottle of random paints I've mixed together. And then this is, this is very deceptive. This Opera Rose isn't Opera Rose. It's absolutely smack you in the face pink. There you go. Um, it wasn't what I expected when I bought that, but I do find that it does, it does blend quite well with other colours. So, um, it wouldn't have been my choice, I can tell you that. That that I was looking for a nice delicate pink and I thought, oh, that's a bit bright, but I can add white to it. But then when I saw this colour, I was like, yeah, I'm not really into fluorescence. Um, but you know, like someone out there maybe, so let's embrace the glow, shall we? Let's just embrace the glow. Again, I'm just doing thin layers of colour down. I'm doing two per... Um, session purely because that means that I've got um, a bit of an ombre going on there. Just roll that off. Now here today it is, what is it? I think the weatherman said it's 40 degrees today, which believe me for Cardiff or for Wales is darned hot. So things are going to dry out quite quickly. I don't normally use retarders. Um, because I haven't got any and I wouldn't wouldn't need them normally because Wales is quite a wet country anyway. Um, if you go over and watch any of the lives that PM Artist Studio do, and they do do three lives a week, and I would highly recommend going over and watching them. If you can see them live, I would say do it. They're on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays. If you can see them live, 
fabulous because you can ask questions, you can interact. Patricia and Mariah, who are PM Artist Studio, will actually answer questions there and then. Also, a lot of the people on the stream are from their um, Facebook group, which is, oh God, I always get this wrong. Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists, I think it's called. Um, so there's a lot of that community watch the lives as well. So there's, see, it's not that bad when it's mixed, is it? There's a lot of information shared, a lot of research done, a, a lot of helpful hints and tips. And of course, you can always watch a live after the fact. You don't have to watch it when it's actually happening. Right, I've still got a little bit of muck on there. That doesn't bother me. I think I'm going to try and go in another direction now. Um, let's have a think. I think those two will be bright enough. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, uh, I would just say go. Go over, go over and see them out. I would love you to subscribe to them. I would love you to actually support them in any way you can. Um, they're a small family business. I absolutely adore them. They're... They're wonderful. Um, Patricia is the mother and Patricia is actually an ex-art teacher. So therefore, you know, you've got a really good layer of um, product knowledge, information, design. Everything about them is there. And I absolutely love the fact that um, Patricia is willing to share her vast knowledge with everybody. Um, Mariah is her daughter. And um, Mariah is more someone who um, works as an illustrator with software. Uh, there is a hidden element to PM Artist Studio. Um, it should really be PMB Artist Studio at this point, I think. And that's Mariah's husband, who is Brad, who does a lot of the behind the scenes design work and helps with the stencil and mask cutting. Um, Patricia is just a machine for pumping out new inventive and innovative um, ideas. Uh, Mariah will look at designs, take them on board, play with them herself because she is an artist within her own right. And she will then fine tune them. They'll then go on to Brad who will fine tune and design even further, which I find really exciting that they've got an end to end process. Then the, the test pieces will come back to Patricia. I like him. That's nice. It's a nice sunny color, um, which will then come back to Patricia and Patricia will test drive them. Basically, Patricia will put them through their paces tell you what needs to be changed, what doesn't need to be changed. And usually as part of that process, you'll find other products get a bit of a spin off at the same time from that. OK, right. I've got some muck on there. I'm just going to bring in a bit of tissue paper and see if I can lift any of that off and out of there. Um, I don't mind the odd bits. What I'm trying to remove is the straight lines. And I may even come in with a damp cloth and just remove those lines. Uh, for no other reason than I just don't want them there. Now, uh, for those of you who are following me, I tend not to use baby wipes unless baby wipes are actually the perfect um, piece of equipment to be using for a project. I'm trying to cut back on the amount of baby wipes I use. So I use face cloths. This one's stained, stained and stained and stained. They get washed regularly, but you know, if I was caring, I wouldn't have actually bought white face cloths in the first place. And I just picked them up at my local dollar store and boom, they're done. OK, I've got a few more here. Um, let's just do four more because I want, I want to add another color combination. We'll do a blue. So let's pop those back over there in the box. So let's pull in a blue. Um, let's look at Panth. Pithalo. I can't say that. Have a look at it and see if you can pronounce it, because I sure as hell can't. And it's an opaque on that instant. And I think let's add a bit of transparent red to that, purely because red and blue will make purple. So I might have a nice surprise when I do this. So let's pop that down there. So, um, so what is my relationship with PM Artist Studio? Well, I actually need to take that bit of gunk off there. Thank you very much. Um, I first heard of PM Artist Studio from 
a New Zealand artist called Foyle Davis, who was using their products. Um, and I absolutely fell in love with them and went, I've got to find out who these people are. Um, I then found out, obviously, and put my first order in um, and built up a relationship from there, to be honest, with um, Patricia and Mariah. Um, I class them as friends. I class them as artists. Um, and I just love what they do. And I really want to see that company grow. Um, they're going to... They're just offering the art community something that I think currently is a little lacking. I think we've got to the stage where products are pretty much mass produced and designs are designed a lot of the times um, with a commercial view to the manufacturing of them in that they, they tend... Large manufacturers don't want to take a risk on creating a million stencils if they're not going to be incredibly popular and and earn their money back. Um, whereas PM Artist Studio think more about what the artist wants and not so much um, do they need to sell a million of them. They don't. They, they pretty much cut the stencils on demand, which cuts down on overheads, which I think is very, very wise. And there's another one, I don't need that one, um, which is very, very wise of them. Um, they offer unique designs. And the other thing I really love about the lives that they do is during... Oh, that's nice. I love that. During the lives, they will actually discuss new designs, get feedback. Oh, it's very dark. That's going to need some white or something on it. Um, they will get feedback from people in the live chat. I'm loving those in the live chat and then new ones will be developed. I mean, in the time I've known them, I've seen several new um, designs come out and they release, I would say on average, probably release, oh, I'd say a new design a week. I, would, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to hold them to that, but I would say if you took all of their designs in one year and divided it up, I can assure you, it's probably going to be more than 52 weeks and weeks and 52 designs. I'm just going to clean up the edge of this um, plate because keeping the edges of the plate clean will stop anything from tearing if I put it on there like I used a piece of paper or something to clean up. Okay, right. I've got stuff on there. Don't mind stuff on there. I'm quite happy to have stuff on there. So let's have a look what we produced. So we produced four in the yellow-orange band. I had a couple of pink and teal. I call this teal. I don't I don't know. Some people call it turquoise. Um, that probably is more turquoise or it's the same colour. We've got some greens and yellows here. And then we've got the four which are slightly damper because I've just done these. I'm going to lay them side by side. So there you go. So that, that gives me some bases. And as I said, I've got all of the bases over here I can work on as well. So I think... It's time we actually started working with the product themselves. So I'll just get rid of that tissue a second. Okay, I've got some clean tissue on the go. Okay, now I have stuff on here, which as I said, I do not mind having this on here. What I want to do is I want to put a thin layer of something down on here, and then I'm going to lay the mask over the top and then use the tissue paper to remove the excess. Now I think I want to go and put something like a copper down. So I've got this Amsterdam copper here, which I do tend to like. Now at this point, I'm going to put this on my five by seven purely because I'm probably going to have too much there. Um, and I'd rather have it on the five by seven where I can utilize it in some other way than actually on this gel plate where it would then just be swimming around. So I don't want too big of a, sorry, too big, too thick of a layer. I'm not putting a lot of pressure down, guys. I'm literally running the brayer over the top, basically with its own weight. And I'm gonna take, take the mask and pop it down on top. Now I'm gonna take a clean bit of tissue paper I like to use tissue paper for this stage for simple reason that if you rub it with your finger, you can get down into all of the design of the mask. 
and you want to get down within it to actually get all of the surface of the um, gel plate to press against the tissue so that you then actually lift off as much of the paint as possible from the underneath. Now I press that down, I'm going to come in, this is where I use my larger brayer only because it gives me more of an even pressure. I don't want to press so hard that I'm going to destroy something, but I do want to press enough down that it will make in contact. Now when I lift this off, I'm going to have to work reasonably quickly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this off, then lift the mask off and then press onto it a couple of the postcards. I won't be able to get them all on there, although I may be able to utilize some edges. So let's first of all select uh, a couple of postcards to use. Is that dry enough? That one's pretty much dry enough. And I might grab one from the pile over here. Let's have a quick look. Quite like that one, there you go. Okay, so I've, I've picked up some, I can always grab others. So we'll look at the tissue paper afterwards because I basically want to move quite quickly with all of this. So off that comes. Let's pop these down. Now I'm not planning for them to be perfectly covered totally in the daisies. I'm just wanting to pick up whatever is on that sheet underneath it. So let's just grab, grab another bit of tissue paper. And this will just enable me to press that down without catching the edges of anything. I want to make sure it's fully in contact and now I, now I can relax. I don't have to worry about this sitting on here. The longer it sits, the more likely it is to lift off the design and any of the crud I left on there. Now, as we know, I've got excess over here on my um, other plate. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to come in with some of these and just pick up sections of it. See, so I'm adding, I'm adding touches of the bronze to other designs. It's a good way to clean up my plate, my smaller plate, and it adds interest to stuff like this one's really boring. But once I've got this and several layers of other paint on, it's probably not going to be as boring. So see, it's already picking stuff up. I can probably come in with some of these as well. There you go. See, that's that's got I love that shine or shimmer it gets. OK, that one can go to one side. That and that have been tickled up with something, so put those to put them by there. Okay, so um, this is the detail that's left on my mask. Now, I could have tried to put that over onto another piece of paper and had it pick up the design, but to be honest, I don't usually do that. I, I usually just let it sit there because the amount that I would actually get off this is quite minimum, and I don't mind it sitting there. But what I've got now is this is the piece of tissue paper. Isn't that fabulous? Now, this I would use in collage. I'm in the middle of doing um, a dimensional project at the moment where I need collage pieces of tissue paper. So that may see that. So let's put that over to one side to dry. Okay, so I think this has been sat long enough. Um, the sun keeps coming and going here. So I apologise if the the contrast of the screen or anything keeps changing. I have no control over that one. Let's put that down to one side. So let's see what we produced here. Now, I don't expect these to be the finished deal. These are just going to be along the way. But see, interesting. Loving that so far. Interest. Let's see my finger under there. Pull that one up. More interest. See, it's all about the layers. And this is the previous layers of paint on there, which is wonderful. Well, like the richness of that. Can you catch that? I'm sure you can. And I oh, like that colour combination. Hopefully I'm in screen because I can't actually see through my iPad because it's, it's a little bit above me. So we've started these off now. I'm just going to set these to one side just so I know that they've been worked on. And then we're going to work on something else now. I know I've still got stuff on here. I think I might do that one more time. And this time when I pull off the design, I won't use tissue. I will try and use um, the postcard themselves, which is going to be a little difficult because you've got to press down reasonably firm. I do want to see something there. 
Okay, I can just get two postcards in there, but what I can do is I can go around the edges and pick up the pieces on the side. So I need to think about the colours we're going to use. Let's use... Let's use this one. I don't know why I've suddenly decided on that one. And let's see if one of these will work. Let's use that one. Right, so I've got these two as the chosen two. Um, I now need to think about what colour do I want to put on here. It suctioned itself down. Um, this Yupo is quite resilient, by the way, but what I would say is don't go tugging it. I mean, because no matter what it's made of, you're going to end up damaging it if you keep tugging it. Right, let's have a little bit of a look. I think... Right, I've got a permanent magenta here, which I really quite like the idea of. And I think I've got, I'm going to use some white as well. Now, I know the titanium white is opaque and this is transparent. So I should get an interesting, oh, that's a mess. Anyway, let's put that over to one side. My fingers. So I know that I'm going to get um, a nice effect. I don't mind the white showing because the white's going to, give it some nice contrast, especially in the future if I do things like this. And then I'm going to use the permanent magenta, which is, again, one of my favourite colours. Hopefully I've not put too much on there. So when it comes to rolling two colours out, I tend to roll the lightest colour out first so that it isn't contaminated by the darker colour until I actually just come in contact with the darker colour. Okay, now I'm not going to overbrayer this, not in the slightest, and then I'm going to clean my brayer off onto one of my roller, um, one of my label sheets. So I think I'm going to leave that as it is because I like the way that looks. I'm going to turn this paint side down, not that that matters to anyone except myself. I'm going to come in and I'm going to put down the two cards that I was thinking of using. And then I think I'm going to come in and use these just to put an edge on these. Now they're likely to move around a little bit unless I'm a bit careful with where I put the tissue, which I will do. Let's see if I can get some of this on there. So you can utilise as much or as little as you want of the postcards when you lay them down. Let's pull this one up. As I said, I hope things are not drying because it's very, very warm here today. So let's bring in that sheet of tissue and then what this will do is it will embed everything down into the paint below. Now I'm pressing down quite firmly here guys because remember I'm trying to press the card down onto the, um, the mask and through the mask will protrude the plate. So and that's how I'm going to try and get the contact with the underneath. So I'm going to give it a reasonably good press with my brayer. Now there is, an, um, there is a piece of equipment out there called a Baron, B-A-R-E-N. It tends to look a bit like a, like a doorknob um, that you can press down and smoothly smooth things out. I don't have one of those um, so I tend to use my larger, my larger brayer for this product process. So let's take this off. Which Take that out of the way. Right, let's see what, if anything, I achieve to pull up. Okay, that's interesting. I don't mind that. Don't mind that either. That's a little bit of interest on the side. Again, a little bit of interest. That's really made that really dramatic, isn't it? Again, oh, that was a good colour combination. Wouldn't normally have done that. Again, that's a bit dark. Doesn't matter because this could be lighter when it's finished. Let's take this one off the side. That's a nice contrast as well. Right, let's see what we actually managed to do with the real postcards. Okay, for me, that's pretty, pretty close to finished. Okay, I love that. So let's put that to one side. Let's just pull this up. And that's pretty close to finish as well. I think I must have moved the mask a little when I was rollering it. But you know, I don't mind that. It's an arty postcard. Now I'm going to lift this up. And I'm immediately going to pop onto here. 
as many postcards as I can fit into this slot. Uh, let's pop that one that way and I think I'm going to pick the pick pink up with the green there. Okay, just so that things weren't wasted I'm then going to go around and pick up the pieces that are on the edges. See, just to give a little bit more interest as we go along. See, little bits of interest. Let's pull this one in actually because I noticed it was quite pale. You can have a lot of fun with these guys. I think the reason I really, that's cute. Let's put another piece up there. Um, the reason I love gel printing is because I can't control it. Basically, well, I can control it to a certain degree, obviously. Drying times, paint choices, stencil choices. However, I quite like that. Um, however, I like the fact that you never really know what the plate is going to offer you. You just get what you are given. So, right. That's pretty much pressed down. Let's see what we pulled up here. Oh, that's cute. And I can see the metal color, the metallic through it. Loving that. Oh, that's interesting. Now, these are probably nowhere near finished. That's cute. I wonder if I can just lift a little bit more on there. Um, these will be nowhere near finished by the end of this video because it could be that I'll go back in and stamp something on them later. I could stencil them with maybe a bit of texture paste. I quite like that one actually. So as when we come to the end, I will do a show and tell of all of them, obviously. But just know that my aim is not to actually make a finished product at this point. It's just showing you how cute and unique all of these are. So, right. I now want to show another way of using these and that is to use them to mask off um, the plate underneath. So I'm going to put that so it's off the plate. Now these UPO pieces will stick or almost suction down to um, the gel plate. So be careful with that. If you put in the down, you're going to have to pick them up again at some point. So just be aware of that. Um, you can overlap them as well. I tend not to overlap them. Um, because I find when I do that they move around a bit, but I know that P does overlap them. Okay, so remember we're still dealing with postcards here. Now, I've got some quite bright, excuse my arm again, we've got some bright colours here with the exception of that one. So I think we could risk going a little darker. And I've got a feeling, mm, where are you? Okay, golden transparent red iron oxide is possibly my favourite colour. And I know that I don't have a lot of it left. So I have to be a little cautious of this. I've got it all on my finger already. Let's press enter. Now I'm going to put this directly on the plate. Purely because I know I don't have a heck of a lot of it. Now, when you're brayering in this... You have to be careful. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to talk to you. Your brayer may pick up the edges of these. So I very gently start. Just the weight of the brayer alone is enough to hold them in place. And then you can brayer a little bit over the top. A little bit firmer over the top, should I say. But you do need to work understanding that you've got to get the paint down into those crevices. I think I might just have a little bit too much on there. Let's just take some of this off. That's always the danger when it comes to putting stuff on. You never quite know how much you need and that I can't tell you a solution for it. It You, you will find through experience how much to put on and how much not to put on and as you see I haven't fully learned that myself. So I'm going to quickly take these off. Now, they will lift off. They are quite strong, as I said. Don't rip them off because that's not going to help you. Picking up the edge is normally the hardest bit for me. Um, when you're putting your stencils or masks to one side, make sure they're not touching as they're drying because what that will do, it means they all just stick to each other, which is not the best of things to do. And if you've got fingernails, and I don't have fingernails, um, I tend to cut my fingernails. Just just be careful that 
um, you're going to gouge into something. So I'm just going to come in, I'm going to put on the plate some of the postcards. Right, um, how do I want to do this? I think I'll do it so they overlap. So I've got sections of stuff. This will make it look very cube-like, if that makes sense. So when you see it, you're going to see squares and cubes. Let's not smear that, Griffiths. Let's put that one in there. So they're all on there. Let's pull in the tissue paper again. So this will give you another, another look now. So all of the areas that had the daisies on will not have had paint underneath them, which means that when I'm printing, which I am now, all of those areas will show the colour of the background that was on the card coming through it, if that makes sense. Patricia describes it far better than I ever do, so you'll pick it up as you go along. But let's pull this off. So now the moment of truth, let's see whether I've created art or, or not art at the moment. So let's pull up this one. Okay. So as you can see, it's added a block of colour into there. That's interesting. That will give me a reason to run something across there later. Oh, that's very good. Now, see, I've got this orange here. If I then put a band across there, that will bring that to life. Again, very cute. I could put a colour right across those. Now, these are the two that I know are pretty much all of the design. And that's cute. I'm going to leave that just to one side to dry. I'm going to pick this up again. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, so as you can see, the colours come through because the colour was on the card and where the mask was on the, on the gel plate, the paint couldn't go under it. So there you go. So that's a cute example. This now needs to be cleaned, or at least the lines need to be cleaned. I don't want to erase any grunge that's on on here because I quite like the build up you get. I just don't want lines on my work and I want to make sure the edges are cleaned so I don't get any dragging of edges. So let's take that off that as well. So right we've got that far now I think I want to do that again. And this time I'm going to do the two part process where I'm going to put a colour down, then I'm going to put the masks on top, then I'm going to pull that off with the tissue. And then you never know, some of this colour may transfer down onto it as well. I think this time, let's have a little bit of a look. We've got mainly these colours. So what would I put next to that? I would think I want to go possibly purple. Let's have a look. What have I got in the purple range? Okay, I've got a transparent winds of violet. And I've got a pearl lavender. Now, the pearl doesn't really um, show up very much. But what it might do is it might add a bit of shimmer to this. So I'm going to put this down and put this on it with it. So... Um, you will find, or will I find anyway, metallics dry very, very quickly. Or well, they do with me. If I was going to be using a retarder in any way, shape or form, it would be um, if I was using it for a metallic. So now I have to work quite quickly here once this is brayed out. So I'm not caring that I'm mixing the paints on here. That's totally fine. That's exactly what I want to happen. I like the mottled effect. I'm quite happy with that. Right, let's get these back down again. Try and put them in a different configuration than they were before. Not that I truly remember what the previous configuration was. If you want to pick them up, by the way, if you leave them overhanging the edge, you'll find they're far easier to pick up because of course you've got the edge of 
the design to pick up with. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to bring in a clean sheet of tissue paper this time to press down with. Now remember, the more I press down, the more I'm going to pick up the paint underneath through the gaps. So. Just press that down my fingers. I've overlapped here, so I want to make sure I really do press down to get all of that paint up. The good thing about the tissue paper is I can actually see the majority of the places that I've pressed down because the tissue paper takes on the colour of the paint underneath it. So I think that's okay. So let's just gently lift this off. We'll look at that later. So I've got all this on there. Now I need to work quite quickly as I did before because this is all going to dry and dry quite quickly. It doesn't look like any of the um, previous colour came off these, but that's not a problem. I don't mind that. Right, let's add some of these postcards down. Now, I'm not looking for coherent designs. I'm just looking for designs. I'm going to add that one back into the mix, I think, because I like that idea. Let's get another bit of tissue paper in just to make sure they're all in contact. So we're on our way, guys. We've got this one's this one's cooking, should we call it, or steeping, or it's maturing. So right, well that's having a little think about itself. Let's see if I can just pull in the tissue paper we just pulled off. So there you go. So I've now got a piece of tissue paper. There are little bits of the orange come through. So that means I've got that ready to go for collage work as well, which is wonderful. You may see a collage in the future from me in my glue book about all of these. Right. Where's my good braid going? I want to make sure this is fully in contact. Now I'm not squishing too hard, but I am pressing down so that it's all nicely in contact. Right. Lift this up again. And see what magic we've created. Ooh, liking that. See, that's that's broken that straight line up. I'm loving that. See, all interesting things. As I said, these are nowhere near finished, guys. We need to just remember that these are not finished. Well, actually, that one might be finished. Quite like that one. Up your camera. Interesting, green, orange and purple. Not a colour combination I would normally look at. I think I like that one as it is actually. That might go into the it's almost done pile. So now I've got stuff on here. Now the trick is what am I going to pull that up with? I need to pull it up with something that's transparent. Um, it can't be anything pink or blue because it's going to disappear. So it either needs to be white, which I don't want to pull it up with. Um, I do have silver, which could pull it up. I don't find metallics pulled that easily for me. Um, so what colour shall I use? Um, I could go back to that transparent yellow I had. How would that affect some of these designs? Okay, so the yellow would make the red look more orange. That doesn't bother me. Um, I think we'll leave these as, as they are because I think there's something in them already. So I'm just letting this dry as we chat. That needs a bit of help. That's a long way off. Hmm. Don't think that one. that could do with some help. That's a long way off. That's just boring at the moment. Uh, the colour I'm going to use is wrong for that. It might work on there. It might actually. Let's try and narrow this down a bit. So I've got. I think those two could benefit from a good douse of yellow because it's going to really make that different. I think that's already busy enough. I think we should take a risk because I don't know what yellow is really going to do for that. So I'm just going to turn that yellow. That's probably going to be a brownish colour. That will become more of a bright terracotta and that will become more of an orange. And this goodness knows what it's going to do to it. So let's put some yellow on this plate. Now, um, I'm coming in with the transparent one purely because um, I don't want to mask out or cover up the background. Now I'm putting it on my plate over here. Purely because we know, as I've said before, 
I need this to be a relatively thin coat. Now I know it's already dried because of the temperature today. If I'm jelly plating in the winter here in Wales, I do have to turn the heating on or things just never dry on me. So I'm just carefully letting the weight of the brayer brayer things out. I don't want to press down too hard. What I'm hoping to do is just lift up the image which has been reactivated by the moisture from the paint. So let's come in again. I'm not being picky really as to what section goes where because I don't know what's going to pick up anyway. I think the last one is going to be an interesting one to look at. So I just pop that down, give it a bit of a press to make it all in contact. Now I know I've got ink, um, ink, what am I talking about? I know I've got paint over here, so let's just pull in one or two like this and actually just give them a little bit more character. This is what I do, guys. So I take things like this and I'll just build build up on them and then eventually maybe they get stamped on maybe they'll have extra pieces like that must have been part of a dragonfly actually that dragonfly was pm artist studios studio not studios i keep calling them studios i, so I apologize mariah and patricia i my brain always goes to studios so i'm just pulling up pieces of this it's just cleaning my plate and that's how i get a background because I could at some point maybe stencil over the top of this with another one of the stencils or masks using maybe crackle paste. I could do designs on it in pencil. I could do plenty of things. Actually, that's a good thing you should watch too is Patricia is quite the artist at adding dimension to um, her gel prints using colored pencils. I'm slightly envious because I haven't been able to get the same results as P. But then I don't have... The layers and layers of knowledge that P has, but I'm not giving up. I'm working on it. I intend getting, especially my artist trading cards. I'm using the shading technique on a lot. So, right, we're just coming to the end of this, I feel. I didn't want to go more than an hour. Um, and I just wanted to introduce you to the two different masks anyway. Okay, that that was not what I was expecting. Um, <laughs> okay, that one's going to need some help. That was not... Not what one would class as a huge success. Okay, that's not ugly. I can live with that. That's fine. Let's put that to one side. Oh, I can't pick this one up. Um, that just looks dirty. But nothing, nothing is lost. It can always be rescued with something or other. Mm, not, not my biggest score. So we've got some we like, we've got some we don't like. I've got stuff on here, and I'm just gonna wipe this off. So, and then we have this other pile that we pulled over. Just lovely, I mean, I will put more layers on here. I will put dots, I'll put speckles. I'll probably use other PM Artist Studio stencils and masks. You may see one or two of these in future videos where they'll come back for another lease of life. I love the crispness of that. That on its own is just beautiful. I like this whole, how to, weathered. I think weathered is probably the words I'm looking for on those ones. Like that. That's a weird combination for me. I would never, I feel that, I feel, let's just put that to one side a second. I'm having a thought about that one. Quite like this, it looks like very old wall paint. That's just cutesy. I don't mind the shadowing on that. I don't mind that it moved. Again, that's quite cutesy, and we never did anything with that one because I really like that one as it is. So let's push those to one side. I'm having a thought about this one. Let's pull in my five by seven. Now, as you can see, you can do one plate at a time, okay? A uh, one card at a time. Should you not have a big plate, you don't need a big plate. I think I want to come in here. Where is that? Right, this is a transparent red iron oxide again. I did tell you it was my favourite, didn't I? And I'm running really low on it, so I have to believe this is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a really thin coating. And I'm just going to come in with the biggest daisy and just do a little bit of what we did before. 
See, there's stuff on there, and now I'm going to pop this right down in the middle. Hopefully, hopefully it's not too wet. I mean, the postcard's not wet, too wet. So let's just roll that on the back of there, and I'll just get that off my roller because I'm going to have to have a bit of a clean up in a few minutes. So, right, let's peel that out of there. Oh, I cleaned up that plate beautifully. Loving that. So let's see whether I change the character of that with just one layer of something. And I did. Now that is way on its way to being absolutely lovely. So see, you can just, just change one colour and it changes everything. So let's put that to one side. So let's have a little talk then. One last visit to what I've used today. So I used the daisies, which is a set of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've lost a daisy. The daisy stuck itself to something. There's probably another daisy stuck somewhere, guys. Was it? No, a set of seven. I got the wrong one. So two, four, six, seven. So that is this daisies masks set of seven. That's where you'll find it. All of these are on their website, which they should be. And then the next one is this one, which is Going Daisies. And I love this one. I mean, I really, really love this one. You've seen by the amount I've used it. So a wonderful, wonderful mask set. Let's turn it that way. There's more colour in it. So there you go. So hopefully you've enjoyed that, guys. Um, as I said, I will put as much information as I can in the description box down there. It's a grey V or under the description you'll see read more. It's in there. Um, I've just very quickly worked with these, hopefully enough to give you some inspiration, just to give you an idea of what you can do with them. As you can see, we've done some good, some bad and some ugly. But, you know, I try to keep it real. All of this is real. Um, I, lo I love the fact that you can just build up and build up. And if I bring the tissue papers back in. So these were the two tissue papers we made during the pulls as well. Um, this was with the 8x10 mask. This was with the seven individual masks. So, again, a great, great project. Love it. You'll see these postcards in the future. You never know. You might even receive one one day. So where's my little sign going? Okay, where have I put the sign? There you go. So one more time, if you want to take a screenshot, now is your moment. This will tell you who they are and when they do lives and where to find them. And this will show you where all of the social media is. If you don't feel like going to the links there, this is all there for you. I love these two ladies and Brad, thumbs up, mate. You're doing a great job. And it just leaves me to say goodbye, really. I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time, bye-bye now.